Hello fellow space engineers, GopeScope here from the GopeScope Gaming Channel, and I'm happy to welcome you to our second episode in our Let's Build the Oberon series. We're, we're looking at what looks like earlier footage, but it's actually later footage now. Uh, when we were building the turret, we had some of the hull constructed, as well as some of the uh, kind of point defense systems um, already built. And I kind of went back to redesign that a little bit, because after I tested the way that the missile turrets specifically were, uh, not the big missile turret there, but the smaller ones, uh, were seated into the hull, they were too likely to actually strike the hull itself when they were trying to track a target. Uh, in this case, me flying around, uh, that was moving above or below their normal plane of engagement. So the parts of the hull that were designed to try to shelter the welders, that I'll talk about in a little bit, and the turret itself um, became an impediment to the proper functioning of the turret. So between that and having kind of a different idea of how I wanted to do the hull in general, I decided to just scrap it and uh, pulled the completed turret that I did want to keep from the last episode out of my blueprints. And now I'm basically just going to be building the hull back around the turret. The immediate surround will be the same basically as before. The rest of the hull will be somewhat different. It may look similar to an extent, but there, there are some changes, especially with what's going on right around the missile turrets and Gatling turrets. So it takes quite a while to do all of this. So um, I hope you don't mind the sped up footage, but I don't want to have you know, like two hour videos. I don't know if that's going to be engaging. So um, uh, speeding it up and putting it to music. So the parts that don't really need a lot of explanation, we'll just go through and, and see the hull taking shape. And then I'll slow it down a little bit to talk about details uh, with the weapon systems as we go along too. Now you should be kind of seeing um, how the hull's coming together and the difference maybe if you watched the last video and saw the, uh, the previews especially for uh, this episode, the difference in the positioning of these turrets versus the way they were before. So still a similar orientation where they're in kind of a choir, they're sort of stacked, but they don't have that front um, defensive slanted heavy armor section. That was a big issue with uh, rocket strikes, that thing. Um, they were always shooting in that. So unfortunately, that was an idea of mine that did not work. And I'm pushing farther and farther back the kind of flanking ramps that ran down the hull also because they had a tendency to hit those as well. And they'd also limit the field of fire for the, the rocket turrets. So pushing them farther back allows some of the broadside turrets to actually fire forward, which is, of course, a very good thing. Now you'll see under the ship there's a whole mess of conveyors and um, different parts like that. Basically, it's the same configuration for every one of those turrets. And what's happening under there, you saw uh, earlier on one of the, the first rocket turrets I put down, the placement of six welders in uh, two groups of three. One behind the turret uh, that's uh, at the level of the turret's body, and then one behind the turret that's kind of in the floor below the turret. 
Both of those are able to work on and repair the turret. And the concept that I had here is um, kind of comes from noticing that I'm, I'm probably not the first person to come up with this. I'm not certainly not claiming to, but uh, it, it occurred to me that the way that the game is balanced now with armor, um, the heavy armor block is very tough and durable and is capable of withstanding a tremendous amount of Gatling fire and rocket fire even. So the toughness of the armor in this game is substantial, but of course the turrets don't seem to have that kind of durability. Not that they should either. Uh, it makes sense that they're not as tough as a huge block of metal. So um, in looking at how to design this ship and how to fit it in with my vision, overall vision of how this ship and the other ships would work together in some kind of a fleet level engagement, I had to think about the function of this ship, how what role it would serve in the fleet. And in later uh, episodes, we're going to take a look at its drive systems. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to try to put some kind of a gravity drive system in here, uh, because what I'd, what I'd like this ship's role to be is a close-up, direct-fire kind of cruiser that's that's durable and can really dish out a lot of punishment at, at medium to close range. So less of, you know, uh, it might build some later that are longer range, you know, have uh, guided missiles, that kind of thing. The idea with this one, or my vision for it, would be that it would jump right into the middle of an enemy fleet and just unleash all of its weapons and do as much damage as it possibly can. And so if a ship's going to fulfill that role, it has to be very tough. And uh, in order to do that, I had to think about, well, you know, how can I how can I make this ship tough in a way that allows it to continue fighting, not just tough in that it'll float there as a huge hunk of metal with no weapons that are functioning on it anymore. So because the turrets are a weak point, I had to think about how to possibly make them stronger. The way that the way that this might work now, if I had all these turrets out here with no support for them, would be if I got into the middle of a bunch of enemy ships before long between bombers and uh, other ships with, with turrets like this or cannons or whatever, these, these turrets would just get ripped away. That main turret would probably be destroyed. And you'd have a whole lot of ship left that can't really do any fighting um, because those are the weak points. Those are the points that you'd want to target. It doesn't make a lot of sense at this point the way that the game's set up, unless you have a reactor that's really exposed or, or something critical like a reactor, to try to go after critical systems that are internal because it just takes so much uh, firepower to actually punch all the way through um, some heavy armor. It certainly can be done, but uh, at least the sense I get is you may as well target those those turrets and things. I mean, they're a threat. They can damage you, and once you destroy them, you can sort of at your leisure pick apart the weak points of a ship. So... Anyway, the mess of conveyors that you see there and the welders are an answer to that. As I said, I mean, I'm probably not the first person to come up with this idea, and I haven't tested it fully, but in theory, I don't see why it wouldn't work. I tested it enough where I, to know that it works at least to a degree. I've, I've fired at them while those welders are on and found that it basically makes them impervious to fighter Gatling fire. Um, a, a direct rocket hit will still destroy them in one hit, and so... Uh, part of this ship that we'll be adding later is a projector block, internal uh, projector block that has the blueprint for this ship itself that I will try to project overlapping with the whole ship itself so that if a turret is actually destroyed completely, those welders are not only repair welders. Uh, you see me building another system right now. These are all basically the same. So as you see this being built, that's how, that's how basically all of them are built. Uh, but to get back to what I was saying, they're, with that projector block, they're no longer just repair welders, but they're rebuild welders too. So it's sort of self-regenerating turrets, even if they're destroyed completely. As long as those welders are functional and connected, uh, some enemy could come by and think they wiped out a whole side of, you know, uh, of all your turrets and that you're vulnerable. And a few seconds later, they could get a nasty surprise that all of a sudden you got a bunch of turrets back. So certainly not a foolproof weapon system, especially if an enemy knows that those are there, knows that those are a threat, it would be likely that they would focus uh, more firepower on that area after the turret's destroyed than they would normally. So uh, the usual route might be, you know, you're shooting until the turret's destroyed, then move on to another target. If you know that this system is in place, you'll probably try to destroy those welders too. Uh, and that's definitely possible. The welders are somewhat vulnerable. Cool thing, though, is they are tucked in a little ways, and even if they do destroy them, that's all the more firepower having to be expended on one weapon system, uh, which gives the other turrets more time to be shooting. So uh, whether 
whether it works by actually rebuilding and repairing or works by causing them to have to uh, expend more time and energy and take more damage trying to destroy just one weapon system, I, seems like it would be a, a win either way. So I'll be excited when we do a let's battle with this ship, with some other capital ships, to see um, how it fares, what the difference is. So I'd like to put this up against some ships that don't have this kind of repair system, but maybe have a similar level of firepower outside of that and just get a sense of how, how effective it is if it's worthwhile because clearly there are a lot of resources, a significant amount of weight, and they take up a lot of space to put these systems in. If you just had the turrets on the surface, all of this stuff hanging in here wouldn't be necessary and it would leave a lot more room in the ship for, for other things or if nothing else would be that much less mass to have to uh, move around because of course all of these conveyors and grinders and extra blocks are adding to um, to the mass which causes you to have to have more gyros and more thrusters in order to maintain the kind of maneuverability that you're uh, shooting for in the ship. Now here after another test of the missiles where I'm, I turn them into uh, settings for and an enemy ship so that they'll shoot at me basically all I'm doing so that they, they target me in my spacesuit, but I'm in creative, of course, so they don't kill me. They just push me an annoying distance back <laughs> away from the ship. But uh, what, I've, what I'm doing basically is just, like I said earlier, there is an issue with the turrets hitting the ship itself. So as I'm continuing to mold this outer hull, I just keep checking to see how they're doing and if they're still damaging the hull. And I found that, again, uh, they were still striking the hull. So I'm moving back the flanking ramps even farther and uh, just kind of pushing the whole thing back so that the turrets are protruding even more. And another thing you'll notice is that I'm placing armor blocks, heavy armor blocks beneath all the ramps and kind of sealing that up. And that might look like doubling up there, but really the, the ramps are mostly aesthetic. I mean, they'll take some fire, but they're not anywhere near as tough as a, ste as a steel armor, heavy armor block. So um, even though I like the, the look of them, they give a nice different kind of curve to the outside, so it's not everything isn't 45 degrees and 90 degrees and nothing else. Um, you do want to put some tougher parts in behind them to support them, because in a, a firefight, if that's all you have, it'll be really easy to break through and destroy internals in the ship. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, now I'm placing some of the thrusters, this ship will extend back farther, but the part that's going to extend back a little bit like the Tethys is kind of a, a more slender section that then um, beefs out into a, a kind of a another engine section at the rear. And I'm planning on having a couple of uh, larger sort of lifeboats that function while they're attached as part of the thrust of the main ship, but then can detach if people need to escape and uh, fly away and have their own have their own um, fully supported uh, internal um, control center and uh, a little bit of storage, maybe a turret or two, and all the thrusters and gyros it needs to be its own separate ship. But while it's well, uh, merged to this ship, it's actually just going to be um, supporting the ship's maneuverability. So the thrusters you saw me adding there are kind of on the forward end of the ship, but they are, they are forward firing thrusters, uh, or rather the I guess what I'm trying to say is they're not retro thrusters. Um, there, there's kind of a mirrored thruster pattern I'm going to be putting in that are the retro thrusters, but those are just the ones in the back that you saw me placing are actually part of the forward thrust uh, system, the rest of which will be kind of at the rear of the ship. So I like to try to disperse the thrusters um, for a couple of reasons. One is aesthetics, because if you have a huge pile of thrusters all in one place, um, it, I guess it can look good, like the, the Carillion Corvette, really famous, you know, blockade runner, uh, very famous look, and that has a whole bunch of engines right at the back. So it can look good, but it can also just look like a big mess of engines. So um, I like to kind of separate them and build them into groupings that hopefully look reasonably good. And uh, apart, from, apart from just how they look, I think it makes sense to have them in different places because it's that much more difficult to disable or destroy uh, all of the thrust in any one direction if you have to go 
to many different places to do it. And if you're not that familiar with the ship and you're getting a whole bunch of turrets shooting at you, say you're a bomber, you know, from 800 meters away where you can't pick out a lot of details, you know, maybe you spot a big cluster of engines and you destroy them or you destroy some of them. Uh, but because, uh, because you don't have a perfect view of the ship and you're not familiar, maybe you don't realize there's still a whole section of engines in a different place that are basically backups to that. So um, that's kind of my thought process behind where I'm placing them. And like with the other ships, I, I like to build some armor out past them because um, that just makes it that much more difficult to actually get shots on the engines directly. Uh, ideally, I like to have it set up so that the um, angle of attack has to be almost straight on to um, get to them. I don't want you to be able to hit it from hit the engines from the side, um, and certainly not on the body of the engine. So you have the actual thrust, the thruster section that's a darker gray that's protruding. That's tougher. That can take more hits. Uh, it seems like, and I, I couldn't tell you exactly how many, but it seemed like it took a number of rocket hits to actually destroy a large engine if you're hitting the thruster itself. So that, and that may be a change, because I don't think that's always been the case. I think they were weaker before, although I could be wrong about that, don't quote me. But it, it certainly seems like if you hit the body of the thruster, it's very weak. And so uh, having having them nestled in at least enough so that that's protected is definitely important. Um and that's something that uh, you're going to see as I'm putting some of the side thrusters on. Uh, you, you can actually you can you can seat them deeper into the ship um, by just giving some forethought on how you arrange the hull. So you see, there's a couple of s splits kind of in between the more forward. I'm going to call it choir of turrets and the rear one. Uh, in that split, I'm going to have some thrusters, and they'll be seated back in there deep enough um, so that an attacker is going to have to come straight in at them and obviously they're also they're going to be under fire from a lot of turrets while they're doing it they can't uh, for example a bomber at speed it's it's not as easy for them to make sort of an oblique um, approach where they're not coming direct at uh, the ship uh, if they're able to do that, what they can do is maintain their speed and maneuver at the same time so that the turrets have a hard time tracking them, fire away, do their damage, and continue with their inertia to keep going uh, and move on. Um, so having them deeper in forces them to make a more direct attack, and it might force them to have to slow down uh, or try to... Uh, try to maneuver at least around the ship, um, and and they're almost certainly going to have to slow down to do that a little bit. And if a ship, like a small ship, um, or even a even a large ship that's not as big as this, that's designed more uh, for agility than just durability, that's going to be deadly for it because uh, especially a fighter or a bomber, they're they're not going to survive for very long against a large ship rocket or Gatling fire if they're not dodging it. So uh, not all engines are going to be protected as uh, there will be varying degrees. So you see me starting to place these now. Um, these are these are a little deeper in um, or will be a little deeper inside the ship than others. Um, some will protrude a little bit more, but that's the general idea. I'm just trying to kind of get them um, in there and protected.
We've rebuilt a large section of the hull, covered some of the functionality of the ship's weapon systems, and started to install some of the thrusters, and with that we've come to the conclusion of Episode 2 in Let's Build the Oberon. If you've enjoyed and would like to see more, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.